Good afternoon, everyone. It is a pleasure to be here again with you today in another exciting workshop. Thank you for joining us. And um, I really appreciated your being on time. I, I know that I told you yesterday that the schedule was going to change, but since you requested, we are going to, to remain the same today and tomorrow. Uh, starting right now, half past 12 Mexico time until two o'clock, also Mexico time. Thank you uh, for your um, for being here for your support. And um, there is a question we also have a lot of comments, a lot of questions through the, the last workshops regarding technology. Uh, most of you were asking us about I love the workshops. I love uh, to stay or work on my professional development, but I'm not a technological teacher. So today we're going to answer that question. How to be a technological teacher? Um, my name is Abdel Jacobo. I'm the academic specialist for University of General Publishing here in Mexico. And it is an honor to introduce Fernando Perez. He's going to be your speaker today. So let me properly introduce him. OK, Fernando Perez Martinez. He's um, uh, well, he holds a bachelor's degree in teaching English by UNAM en la Facultad de Estudios Superiores en Acatlán. Eh, también tiene un diplomado en docencia en, 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 por parte de la Universidad FES en Iztacal y también un diploma for ESL for Teachers de la Universidad de Oklahoma en 2015-2016. So, thank you, Fernando, for being with us today. It is, it is a pleasure again. So, uh, I think uh, we're ready to start with your presentation. And please be your guest. OK, thank you very much. Um, OK, so hello, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here again. I hope you are fine. Uh, not only you, but all the people uh, around you. And uh, let's uh, start this web seminar talking about uh, Technology, okay? Technology and education. The name of this um, web seminar is Becoming a Technological Teacher. Uh, why I want to emphasize, why I want to stress the use of the word become, because it's a process, it's a continuous activity, it's, uh, it's going to take some time to understand some of the principles. So we are not going to consider that there's a point in which we are going to reach to that level completely because technology changes every day and could be used and could be adapted to different situations in our learning environments. So that's what I want to emphasize and point out that I use the word become to express that I'm talking about a process that it may take you some time to get there, okay? So, um, of course, during this web seminar, you're going to listen to some of the words that I'm pretty sure you have listened so many times before. Internet, uh, online activities, computer, laptop. But I decided to share with you from my perspective and from my understanding, what would be the gradual process we need to follow in order to become a technological teacher. I want to start talking about these two areas that concerned us a lot, technology and education, okay? These both concepts are in the mind of all 21st century educators and material creators. So, but what happens? What's the relationship between these two. Um, as you can see in this picture, uh, we have a race that is about to start. I like to think of um, education and technology in this way. It's a race. We cannot deny that technology changes and evolves dramatically every day. 
So what's our job? Our job as teachers and educators is to keep up with it. We are driving, we are in the same race, but sometimes technology races ahead. And our job is to pay attention and to deal with what we have in order to keep up with technology. So, um, when, I, when I say that we have to keep up with technology, is um, that, that sometimes the educational system uh, is turned upside down in order to keep up with technology, okay? And I think that today, in 2020, more than ever, education and technology have to race next to each other. Due to this uh, current situation that we are living around the world, most educators and education institutions are uh, using technology to keep on working, to carry on working, and to, um, to continue with the contents, with activities that we had previously planned for this time of the year. So when we talk about technology and education, uh, we have to talk about digitalization. Okay, what is this concept of digitalization? Well, basically it's um, the integration of digital technologies into everyday life. Okay, this is the general picture. Um, how technology has influenced our lives, our everyday lives. So I would like to take a minute uh, for you to participate on our chat and I want you to share with, with me and to share with the rest of us um, how technology has changed the way we interact with each other, how has technology changed the way we learn, how has technology changed the way we buy things. Okay, so if we could read some of the comments from the chat before we go on to this aspect of uh, digitalization in education, I would like to to read some of your ideas of how technology has changed your life, your everyday life. Very good, Fernando. Since we have a delay, let's just wait for some of the responses. Mm -hmm. So I guess they are typing out the answer. Thank you. Meantime, can you repeat the question, please? Yes, I would like um, I would like the participants of this web seminar to share with us um, their experience about how technology has changed our everyday lives, the way we communicate, the way we interact with each other, the way we learn, the way we read, the way we buy. Okay, I can see uh, here um, Angelina Talenta. Uh, she says that nowadays we can't be without digital devices. We depend on them and sometimes too much. I totally agree. We depend on computers. We depend on maybe smartphone to work, to study or to keep ourselves entertained. Then um, here we have also uh, Ana Maria Cisneros says that technology helps to get to others a distance, yes, and makes our lives easier and faster and enhances communication with whom we are away. Yes, definitely technology has, uh, bro has brought us closer to those who are far away, but sometimes has also um, keep distance from the ones that are very near. Ramon is sharing with us that access to information is the most important aspect uh, in which technology changed not only his life, but everyone else's life. Yes, I think that now the amount of information that we can access is just uh, uncomparable. I mean, we cannot compare it to the amount of information maybe we had 20 or 30 years ago. I'm going to read 
uh, one more comment before we proceed with uh, digitalization in education. Um, here we have um, uh, Nefti from Spain is telling us that it has changed the way we interact with each other, but also the way we approach our students. Uh, it makes our lives easier, the distance, it makes uh, the distance shorter and education cheaper and more accessible for everyone. Thank you very much, Nefti. I totally agree with, uh, with you on this comment um, that it has changed our, our uh, relationship with our students. Okay, so let's, uh, let's proceed. Okay, so um, we were talking about digitalization, okay, um, which is the integration of digital technologies into everyday life. Now we're going to focus on something a little bit more uh, specific, which is education, okay? Um, yes, the digitalization, it's, we talk about how internet has changed our lives, uh, based on artificial intelligence or devices. If we could uh, outline some of the most common examples of digitalization in education is definitely online courses. These courses uh, that were or are still being developed by experts who have proficiency in their specific field and uh, thanks to this and due to this, they can give you the experience of real-time learning by designing their own online courses. That's, uh, I think, one of the most um, easy examples to identify, okay? So then we have also online exams, which is also part of the digitalization, uh, making the examination process more convenient, not only for teachers, but for students. Uh -huh. Sometimes it's not possible to attend to college or to go to a specific institution or city to, um, to sit an exam. So online exams has, um, have helped a lot uh, people to, to do this. Another example that we are going to mention in digitalization in education is definitely digital textbooks, okay? Um, yes, all these e-materials, these textbooks provide interactive interface uh, with uh, in which the students have access to media content, videos, interactive presentations, links, blogs, and so on. And also, uh, we cannot forget that technology has helped um, education about when we talk about animation, right? The, this, this new option that we have, this visual representation of topics, um, will help students to, to grasp, to understand better the concept. And although maybe we are not, not everybody is prepared to, to work on animation, uh, it, it, is, it has definitely helped a lot this field of education, okay? So when we talk about uh, digitalization in education, not everything is perfect. We have to talk about real environments because we deal with real situations and real people. I would like to ask you, what do you think are the advantages and disadvantages of digitalization in education? Okay, uh, I will invite you again to share on our chat so I can read some of your comments. What do you think are the advantages and disadvantages of um, technology and education. Okay, I will give you some minutes so you can share with me and with the rest of the members today so we can proceed.
Okay, so here we have um, some comments about um, advantages and disadvantages. Okay, uh, yes, of course, um, Jesenia is telling us that uh, yes, technology has helped us to get more content. Yes, where is it? Here is. Yes, technology, Juan Alberto Acosta is telling us that technology uh, is the way we solve nowadays situations or current situations, and it has been there for a long time. It can be used to improve the teaching and the learning process, yes. Luis Miguel is telling us that uh, it helps, that one advantage of digitalization uh, in education is that it helps to have more educational tools, definitely. Advantage is uh, we have here another advantage from from your comments says that we have quick response to your lessons to see if they have learned or not. OK, it's immediate and allows you to 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 see the progress of your students. I would like somebody to focus or to share with us a disadvantage. What do you think would be uh, a disadvantage of technology and education, of digitalization and education. Let's read. Here we have one. Um, says it says a disadvantage would be that the students get more distracted, way more easily. Okay, if they are in the computer on on, on a tablet or an advice, definitely maybe a game, uh, an advertisement will pop up, and will. Uh, distract our students. Yes, that's a disadvantage. I'm going to read one more. OK, uh, Nefti is telling us system failures, rural areas where they do not have access to the Internet or online information. Yes, definitely. This is one of the disadvantages that I would like to mention. This technology was made by humans and it all it, it of course contains uh you, you you will find mistakes there yes um okay yes another person is sharing with us that not everybody has access to technology just yes, unfortunately this is a reality okay and another disadvantage uh, according to luis miguel says that it's impersonal i agree to a certain extent with you and I am going to explain why. OK. Um, let's continue. I want to talk about the, um, the advantages and disadvantages of digitalization in education. OK. Um, one advantage, let's focus first on the positive things and then on the negative. One advantage is um, it fosters, it promotes productivity and efficiency in the way teachers work. I don't know, but it has happened to me that I have a pile of printed handouts materials and sometimes I'm thinking about one particular that I want to use for a specific lesson and it takes me about 10, 15 minutes to find it because I'm not like the most organized person in the world. So and I read about this and it's interesting that it takes about on average 12 minutes to a person to find a document uh, that they are looking for. OK, so it's more efficient if you have your materials, your activities, your links organized, it will help you to retrieve them better. Another one is that um, preserves information. It an advantage definitely is that promotes the preservation of information. The information will always be there. Otherwise, if you have paper or activities, uh, you may lose them and maybe it's difficult for you to retrieve them again. And when we talk about paper, of course, one of the of the main advantages from the environmental perspective is that we can go paperless. I mean, yes, um, it will allow you to interact in a different way and not waste so much paper. 
And probably the the biggest advantage would be that it uh, contributes to the digital transformation of our lives, of your classes, of your courses, of your school. Those are the advantages. What about the disadvantages? The disadvantages, yes, we cannot deny that they exist and they are well. The first we have the mechanization of the process. Sometimes the students use technology, um, well, I mean, yeah, they use the technology to learn instead of learning from it, okay? Using an applied science to achieve education in the proper way, it's a good thing, but it may take quite some time to get the set of skills that are required to do this. So yes, that's one aspect that a lot of uh, people have mentioned. Um, that it's very mechanic and that it's impersonal. It's something that some of you mentioned on your comments. Also, uh, one disadvantage of uh, this digitalization in education would be the poor student habits. Since the students, they do not have uh, somebody next to them who can guide them through these uh, student habits, they may get lost or they may get distracted, okay? So relying, relying completely on computers will definitely uh, affect some students that do not possess uh, good student studying habits, okay? Think about students when they are typing a document and they, uh, the computer corrects their spelling. It's taking this process away from them, okay? It's not letting, it's not letting them uh, practice or learn from their mistakes based on their on their um, spelling errors. Okay, so this will definitely affect a little bit the way they process the information. Then troubleshooting or troubleshoot. Yes, we're working with equipment, and it may uh, you may encounter failures, breakdowns, and that's something that we cannot control. And the last one is interaction. A lot of you said this also too, that it's impersonal. It's you're not talking really to anybody. So yes, uh, yeah, interaction is definitely uh, is not meant, you know, to replace the teacher. Technology is not meant to replace the teacher. Rather, I mean, the teacher can use this to create a more rich learning environment, OK? So these were the advantages and disadvantages that I could appreciate from uh, reading different uh, perspectives on, on technology and education. Let's, um, okay, let's proceed. And this is something that I, had already, that I have already mentioned. Technology is not meant to replace the teacher, okay? Yes, technology is going to be a tool, is going to determine um, how we communicate with each other in the classroom, in the session, but cannot replace the teacher, okay? The way we teach, the way we teach is going to be in the middle of technology and education. We are going to be the balance between them. Okay, there are um, four concepts that I decided to point out in this presentation to develop awareness about technology in education. These four key concepts are going to help us understand a little bit where, where is this path going to take us. So we have blended learning, flipped classroom, personalization and community. We are going to start with blended learning. I'm going to give you uh, some minutes so you can share. What do you know about blended learning? If you don't know this concept, don't worry. If you have an idea, feel free to share. And let's read. What's your conception of or your preconception about blended learning? Thank you. 
Okay, here we have a comment from Jesenia says the technology let us send and receive information in a few minutes. So for example, we can chat, work, play with family, friends, colleagues, yes. And also we can look for or search information by things, uh, yes, from our houses, okay? But remember, what I'm asking you right now is to share. What do you know about blended learning? What is blended learning? Okay, Marcela is telling us that blended learning is about online learning. Yes, yes. Okay, Ramon, blended learning, here you have. I don't see that comment. Yeah, blended learning, Ramon, blended learning uses platform to learn via technological tool and also face-to-face. -face. Excellent contribution, Ramon. Yes, yes, when we talk about blended learning, blended learning, um, we talk about this um, relation between online learning and face-to-face -face learning, okay? We have these two concepts, face-to-face -face learning and online learning. When they, when they reach, common area, it's what we call uh, blended learning, okay? It's an educational program which combines online digital media with traditional classroom teaching methods, okay? It's when these two worlds encounter. And this is what we call blended learning, okay? It's a combination of face-to-face -face learning with online learning. Mm -hmm. Think about when you are planning a class, when you are creating your, your lesson, when you're creating a lecture, it's just you thinking about the possible, uh, the possible problems you may have, the possible knowledge your students they have. Uh, so you have very limited information on your students. So maybe your lesson turns out to be too easy for some, and the consequence of this is that your students will uh, get bored. Or maybe the other scenario is that it's too difficult for some and some students are going to get lost. So how is going to, how is blended learning? How is technology going to help us to, uh, to achieve a balance when we create lessons? Okay. It's a combination of online content and face-to-face. -face. So what are the advantages of blended learning? What are the advantages of online content? Well, the first one definitely is that students move at their own pace. Mm -hmm. For those students who are familiar with tablets, with computers, with laptops, with smartphones, it's going to be faster for them. So they are going to move faster than others. But don't think that the ones who are not familiar are going to get lost in the way, are going to be left behind. No, I think that definitely the online content um, gives students who are very a little bit unfamiliar with this the chance to do it several times so they can at their own pace they can pause they can watch and re-watch a video for example an activity and also give them uh, give them access to some other resources or activities so we have two possible scenarios for the students who are familiar is going to be very beneficial and for those who are unfamiliar with this still is going to be very, very beneficial for them. And once they find their own pace, they're going to engage when most alert. Yes, doesn't matter even not only for, for students, but also for you, for adults, right? There are some of us who work or who function better 
uh, I don't know, during the morning, some of you in the afternoon, some of you at, at night. So you can do it at your own pace, okay? When you're ready, when you feel like doing it. And also uh, another advantage is that you can take breaks when needed, uh -huh. when you have online content for some reason, uh, an interruption or you need to take a break, you have the ability to pause and uh, start uh, again or resume later on. OK, so that would be the online content we are talking about when it comes to blended learning. OK, um, I have two scenarios here. Yes, the blended learning counts on face-to-face -face interaction. Yes, on one-on-one -on -one student. Yes, is not, do not confuse this concept of blended learning with online courses. Some online courses may be in a platform and the students should be online all the time in order to complete the course. This is not blended learning. Blended learning is the combination between face-to-face -face with, um, with uh, online resources, okay? So we move from this sage on the stage to a guide on the side. It's a big concept. It's a big concept, okay? If we narrow down this um, concept, we will find different forms, different variations of blended learning. One of them is the flipped classroom. And I'm going to ask uh, some of you, what do you know about this concept, flipped classroom? Some uh, books that we have worked with in in uh, Dayton Publishing, consider this concept of flipped classroom. So I would like to read uh, what what are your answers about this? What is flipped classroom? If you don't know, don't worry, speculate. Feel free to speculate. What comes to your mind? When we talk about flip, we're talking about putting something upside down. But how does this apply to education? Okay, um, here we have teacher Emmy uh, is telling us that online they have a lot of time to analyze the information and in classroom they have a specific time to analyze and respond to the teacher about the knowledge. Okay, very good. Okay, yes. So when they are online, they take their time to analyze the information and in the classroom, they take the time to show that they have that knowledge. OK, um, here we have. About the question that I ask you about flipped classroom. Yes, Ramon is telling us um, flipped classroom is when. The charge of the learning process is given to the students instead of the teacher. The teacher is just there to guide and help the students create their own learning. OK, I I partially agree. It's not completely that we want to discharge the teacher from the responsibility and give them to the students. It's not that. OK, it's a bit more about the way we organized the lesson. OK, here we have another comment from Ana Maria Cisneros, and she's telling us that flip classroom let us assign some tasks to our students in advance to be later discussed in our online class. Yes, some tasks, some assignments are going to be done in advance before 
So the moment they stepped into the classroom, they may have an idea, a previous knowledge about it, and the teacher will just uh, monitor, correct if necessary, but it's changing a little bit the dynamic in the classroom. I will have another comment here. Okay. Yes, Kevin. Kevin is telling us that it is when the conventional classroom learning is inverted. Our students are introduced to the learning materials before class. Yes. Yes, very good concept of flipped classroom. The Yanira uh, flipped when the students have a guide to study a topic, then you discuss or practice it at school. Very good. I'm going to read two more. Says uh, Marcela, maybe it could be when the students share some information from online and then analyzed with the teacher before the topic. They analyze, I, I want to stress this out, they analyze the information before. Very good. And one more. Mm, here we have a comment from Fernanda Perea. Says flip classroom is when students do research prior class, and then in the classroom they have the opportunity to share together. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So let's, yes, yes, when we talk about, when we talk about uh, flip classroom, yes, we talk about this change that is done uh, in the order, right? Let me just share. Okay, Abdel, can you see my, my slide right there? It's frozen, Fernando. You want, you can stop sharing and we will see your, your camera and then share it again, please. Okay. Okay, what about now? It's perfect now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so yes, um, this uh, bigger concept of blended learning um, could be narrowed down to a specific example, which is the flip classroom in which we have online resources that are going to be consumed at home before in advance. So the moment the students go into the classroom, they will have an idea and knowledge about the lesson. OK, so that allowed the teacher to change the dynamic. OK, I'm going to give you an example. Um, some of you are maybe are familiar with this material, uh, with this platform that we have in uh, University of Dayton, which is um, UDP Access. And I took a specific example from iWorld, which contains an online reader with some activities. So assigning this, um, this uh, homework or this activity to the student before the class is going to be very beneficial. First of all, he's going to get involved. He's going to ras grasp um, the, the topic the the vocabulary probably and may infer the grammar they are going to work with later on and also in this platform the students have um, different activities to consolidate to reinforce the topic so this is the first step not the lesson itself is the first step the students are going to do the activity and this is going to trigger the content for the lesson for the class. So the next day or the following the classes, the student will arrive at the classroom 
with an idea about this and it will be easier for the teacher to unify the knowledge for everybody. OK, so this is one example of a flipped classroom. All the activities that can be done before the class. So the moment student steps into the classroom would be easier. For teacher. Um, this is this was these were the first two aspects that I mentioned as key concepts for becoming to or to or, or to raise awareness, to develop awareness in order to become a technological teacher. OK, OK, so now we know that we have online resources uh, and also we know now that there's a way to organize those resources. We are there now. Let's talk about personalization. Uh, how we can use this concept of personalization in education, how this is going to help us to become more technological. And I included these two examples. I think most of you, some of you, or the majority of you will have used by now different platforms, apps, websites, I chose these two, these two. Uh, Spotify on Amazon. I don't know if it happens to you. I'm sure it has. That you look for a song or you are looking for a product. You find it and then the algorithm. Starts um, sending you information related to that because now they know what you like, what are your preferences, what are the things you are most interested in. That is personalization. It's not only a concept in marketing or in or in or in uh, digitalization of of everyday life, but also we can take this concept of personalization to education, right? It's adapting or identifying the preferences of different people. So what does personalized personalized learning mean? OK, this personalized learning, uh, we talk about technology and how this technology is going to give students more freedom. Yes, more freedom to control their education experience. Yes, it sounds good, but I mean, how do we uh, put this into practice. What does it mean in practice? OK, so. Le blended learning, yes, is going to involve different um, Internet resources that will allow students um, or will let them afford a more personalized learning uh, based on their experience, on their time, the place, the path and their pace of learning. OK, I'm going to mention another another example um, that is going to help you identify uh, how students can personalize their experience in the classroom. Of course, talking about um, online resources. So here we have another example. This is um, highlights library. This is a platform that will allow students to be more proficient in reading skills, vocabulary as well. Yes, and they are going to find their way through this platform, through this website. OK, so they have a level, you know, according to to the level of education and they may have a goal to read 9, 10, 20, 30 stories. Yes, they can track their progress. Um, the personalized the personalization here comes when you let students choose or express what they like, what they are most interested in. OK, um, in this example that I'm showing you in this platform, well, students can choose from a variety of topics, could be from uh, animals, people and places, community, fun stories, or maybe science. They are going to personalize this according to their interest 
and the platform is going to give the students what they are asking for and then is going to suggest more related uh, to the interest of the students. So this will help and this will allow students to progress at their own pace, of course, to the goals according to the goals set by the teacher, by the school, but also taking into consideration a student's interest. OK, this is just one example of personalization. Mm -hmm. There are more. There are more examples or more principles that you need to consider in order to personalize the learning experience. So, well, the first one is like, yes, you have to to explicitly teach and practice the skill that the student is going to need for direct learning. That is the first step. Then you have to give the students more choice in little things uh, so they know how to make decisions about big things later on. And also you're going to give additional structure to the kids who, who need it the most or who want it more. And also you are going to let kids help design the learning outcome, okay? Um, if you choose an activity or a task that the students have to, to do in class, why don't you involve them in choosing the activity based on the things they like? Instead of imposing the activity, you will let them, you know, participate and, and, and be part, be a fundamental part of the learning outcome. Yes, they're going to get there, but they chose, they selected the way they're going to get there. OK, so this is uh, a little bit about how you can personalize learning uh, for your students. Yes, of course, integrating online resources. So this is our third um, principle. OK, we mentioned blended learning as this combination of online face to face. Then we chose the way we're going to use this, which is flipped classroom. We're going to change the order. We're going to invert the order, OK? What activities are you going to uh, select in order for your students to get involved with it? Ah, uh, you need to personalize those activities, those outcomes. And one of the comments that some of you wrote here it's about interaction, and that's exactly where we are going to uh, check next, okay? About um, interaction. It's very, very important, this concept of community, because technology are going to help us enhance collaborative learning, okay? Otherwise, it will be very mechanical, very impersonal, and we will definitely lose this um, interaction that students will definitely have in face-to-face -face time. Okay, so when we talk about um, community, yes, we talk about um, this perspective, all this view, how students can collaborate together in order to be part of the community, to be part of a group, right? So the learning communities, yes, we make the classroom more social. This is the purpose of the community of the collaborative learning to make the classroom more social using technology, of course. Yes. So um, in this way, students will embrace curiosity in order to discover, to learn new things. OK, and of course, you have to team up. You have to work together. So here we have two important um, aspects that we need to consider. Uh, the first one would be teaching students collaboration instead of competition. This is going to prepare them for the digital world. Yes, where innovation is driven by partnerships and cooperation. Yes, and this is a skill for life. And then also we have when the students understand that they are contributing to the success of the entire group the classroom dynamic will definitely change dramatically. Yes, when a student, when a student feel, 
feels that he's contributing to the whole success of the project in the group, it, it changes the role and the approach towards the activity. I would like to share with you an example. This, is, this was done with, um, with high school students, with my high school students, which is a whole different dynamic also, in which they are assigned a project instead of just preparing a class of model verbs, should, have to, yes, I decided to create a project in which, based on their preferences, yes, they're going to make a tutorial. Very brief tutorial could be from three to four minutes. They're going to teach the group. They're going to contribute to the learning of the group how to do something um, from how to make bolly pizza which is a dish that i didn't know it existed but thanks to this tutorial now i know it exists um, from making light stick okay so they have to team up they have to work together and um, outline what is it that they want to teach to the group okay this one particularly i remember this one how to make a cheap light stick i know the word light i know the word stick i know that you can put them together light stick but i said at that moment what is this what is a light stick why do i need to make a light stick and they show me how okay so with the vocabulary they had already worked with, with the structure that they had already worked with, they are now teaming up in order to create an outcome. Okay, in this tutorial, these students could um, teach us how to make a cheap, because that was the thing, a cheap light stick. Light, uh, light stick. This stick that you can take to a concert, to an event, or a party, so people can notice you are there, OK? So it follows a process. The students need to team up and follow a process to reach agreements in order to fulfill this task, OK? Who is going to do what? How is it going to be done? And of course, everybody has a crucial role on this. And then, well, the students had to post these videos so everybody in the group could watch the videos comment and give feedback about it okay so that's another part once they share you have to make sure that everybody gets involved in this okay um okay i have here one one uh, quote that i am going to read and then i'm going to ask you to tell me what do you understand by this? What is your um, understanding of this concept? And if you could elaborate a little bit more, I will be more than happy to read your contribution. So this, this one says that education technology can help teachers make better decisions by collecting learning data, but it cannot make those decisions for them. Okay, I am going to uh, give you a minute so you can write uh, and you can share with everybody what's um, your opinion about this. What do you think is talking about? Okay, here we have, I will ask your, your questions in a moment about the things that I have been talking about during this session, uh, but right now I would like you to share um, your, your thoughts, your opinion about, about this phrase, about this quote that I wrote, that education technology can help teachers make better decisions, but cannot make those decisions for them.
OK, so let's check some of. The comments. Okay, so um, Angelina Talenta from Peru is telling us that the best thing to say, technology is a tool, it's a good friend, yes. It's there to help us, but not to replace our decisions, yes. That's why we as professionals, we have all this knowledge and theory about how to deal with all these um, resources available. Then we have another person here says it is OK. The education. It is OK. The education can help make better decisions because we can search more information and our ideas have a base. Yes, I think that uh, the, the more information you have about this, the more elements you're going to rely on in order to choose or to plan on a specific um, project or activity. OK, more comments here. Thank you very much for your comments. I have here. Um, having a different information. With different points of view, let us choose the one we are looking for. Definitely. Yes, at the end, we as teachers are the ones who who choose and who know what is going to work best in our classroom. OK. Um, then we have another comment uh, from Daniela says, I think that when you mix your class a little bit is better for students. They are able to focus better and that variation is really interesting. Yes, and the students definitely appreciate this, um, this change, this, this variation of the standard. I have another comment here. OK. Says. Um, here I don't have a name. Yeah, sometimes technology controls students instead of a student controls technology. Yes, yes. Personalization make classes more meaningful because it uh, goes directly to to the student's interest. Then we have another one says I have. I have 30 students in a normal class, but now. In this. I lost it, I lost it. Yes, OK, well, I have it here. It's pretty much to this like, uh, but how do you how to manage the use on technology in big classrooms? OK, so yes, so this will definitely come up with uh, preparation with tasks that you have to prepare in advance in order for your students to all participate. If you create teams, make sure that everybody um, has a role in this project and at the end they have a product. Maybe you can have in a big group. I don't know how big you're talking about. If it's 30, if it's uh, 25, then at the end you can only have five outcomes, five products that would allow you to analyze and to evaluate better how uh, your students worked. OK, now. Here, let me read some more comments here. I know Paola is asking me how we can work with teenagers. Well, teenagers, uh, since they are in this process, in this process in which they are um, <clears throat> growing up, evolving and creating their own personality, then it, I think it's a little bit easier to identify their preferences, the things they like. And based on this, you can personalize the experience and use resources, reading stories 
in your class that will help. Okay, Abdel, do you consider uh, appropriate if we start with some answering the questions from uh, all the presentation? Yes, Fernando, actually we have several questions. Is that okay if I po post them on the chat box? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, so I can read them now. Um, <clears throat> okay, so Jesenia, oh, you got, I got it here. Here. Yes. Exactly. Uh, Medico is telling us, as you said in the beginning, technology isn't meant to replace the teacher. We have the last word. Yes, we, we, we decide how to use these resources in our classroom. Yes, uh, teacher Emmy is telling us that I think that the students have their own perception about their decision in how to apply the information and turning into knowledge and learning. Yes. Yes, so when you talk about that they have their own perception about their decisions is that they, they are able, you know, to be more active, to, to be more participant in the learning process in the classroom. They are not just uh, uh, passive uh, members. They, are, they need to be active. That's why we change the role. OK, we have another question. It just says uh, letter, letter D says what is what it means is that teachers are still essential in the learning process. Yes, somebody has to design, organize, filter the information and put it together in order to facilitate experience. So at the end, yes, the teacher is the one who, who takes responsibility for this. Says um, another comment here. Um, Says Betty, she's telling me that she spent almost five months in a wheelchair and prepare uh, my classes using laptop, cell phone and pad projector, iPad and projector. Seriously, it helped me a lot. My girls worked good and so much fun. All the video songs and interactive exercise were great. Yes, it was very personal, profitable and above all that, the expected learning was achieved. OK, thank you very much. For your comment, Betty. Yes, um, I think that this uh, played a key role that you knew your students, that you knew what they liked, what their interests were. So all the material, the interactive material you chose definitely helped and contributed to the learning experience. Um, let me read some more of your questions. OK, we have a question. Well, sorry, a comment here from Wendy Maldonado it says every teacher has to stop and think about the outcomes. Check if what is being done is getting us to the result we want. Yeah, and I think that's the second phase of the process. Once you plan it and then you experiment with it, then you have to sit and then you have to analyze and evaluate if it really led you to the outcome you were expecting. Otherwise, you need to change it for the next time. OK, we have another comment. It does not have a name, but says that this is the one I was looking for. It says I have 30 students in normal class, but now in this pandemic situation, I have just 10 students. Yes, that's a disadvantage. Yes, and that's when we talk about that. Maybe the resources are not available to everybody. Yes, so that is definitely, as you said here, a disadvantage of the one, yeah, a disadvantage of, of technology and education, the access to it. And that's our responsibility, not only as teachers, but as citizens of the world to, um, yeah, to, to, to contribute to the spread of technology 
for everybody because it's so beneficial, not only for life, but for education. Not everybody has a cell phone or a computer in order to join these kind of classes. Yes, and that's a reality in these days of crisis. Yes, yes, it's totally related to the topic we, we, we read before. Okay, Paola is telling us that we can make an interesting class. Um, we can make an interesting class with the help of the technology. But teachers have to choose the correct information according to our knowledge, yes? Yes. Um, we have, well, we don't have a name, but as a person is sharing with us, in my case, it's different because the students do, do not have internet or maybe a computer. So it's too difficult to work with the internet for them. Yes, well, if, you, if that's the scenario with your students, then maybe you as a teacher, what you can do as a teacher is in your classroom during your face-to-face -face, um, sessions, you can integrate a little bit more of technology resources so then students can see they how they work and maybe in the future when they are in a different uh, education level or in a different aspect of their life they can remember and integrate this this uh, knowledge okay Okay, says. Exactly, Rumi uh, comments here, education technology is a helpful tool in our hands, but it does not replace our capacity to think. We need to encourage our students to think and get and get to their own conclusions. Yes, yeah, so it has to do, uh, Rumi, a lot with um, digital literacy and critical thinking. Yes, how this education is going to help us to develop this skill, this capacity to think, right? And in order to select what is best for us. Okay. It's a reality, says Betty, uh, much people uh, do not have the gadgets, but if we use, but if, but if we can use that tool in the classroom, let's take advantage of it. Yes, that's, that's exactly the comment uh, that I answered previously. Uh, if they don't have access to it, then show them that that resource is, is available and is useful. Of course, you have to do this in the classroom, you know? Uh huh. Okay, says I'm uh -huh. okay. Somebody's telling me that you would like to get more information about these topics. Yes, definitely. At the end of this session, I am going to share with you um, some links which I um, checked in order to develop to outline uh, this presentation. Yes, you will. You will get to 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 get those links. You will. Yes. Okay, says here we have a comment. Okay, online test. Mary is asking us online test. Could you recommend how to do it? How could we evaluate our students? Yes, well, um, it was something I don't know if you were here uh, on, on the previous days where you talk about online assessment. 
Uh, but if you're talking about how you could, I mean, do you recommend how to do it? Then online tests, if you're talking specifically about online tests, there are many websites, websites that will allow you to create online tests because that's your question. Um, not only, not only um, true or false, but, but fill in the gaps uh, that will allow you to create um, some of them. Schoology is one of them. Uh, Google Classroom, it's another one. Yes, that you can use in order to create, but it depends. If you're talking only about online test, that's what comes to my mind. If you're talking about online assessment, that's a whole different uh, topic. Okay, Isara is telling us that the education has emotions in each activity. So if we need to use any technological tool, we need to investigate and be sure and be sure to share to our students. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, the emotion or the purpose of the activity has to be aligned with the way you are using it. And then I'm going to read two more comments. Two more comments. Okay, says um, Monica is asking you, how do you know if you use the correct technology when you cannot see the expressions of your students from a long distance? Okay, yes, uh, I mean, you, you cannot see them face to face to identify um, the result of the, of, the, of the experience, of the learning experience, but I think that in the outcome, if the result and the verification of it will will give you an idea if the student really um, was interested in this. It was if, if the student was engaged and was involved in the activity. So it's a little bit more, you know, it's not that tangible to do it, but still you can see based on the results of the activity. And my last comment, the last comment that I will read Here we have uh, Ad Ad Adriana Chavez is, is sharing with us. She says, we must be careful with the use of technological resources. Sometimes we use technology not to gamify, yes, because not everything is a game, but to substitute classes. And that instead of motivating students only creates more work for them. Yes, yes, remember these online resources and all these options that we have are going to contribute, yes, not overload the amount of work that we have to do, okay? It's going to make things easier, not more difficult. So that's why Adriana is saying that we have to be careful with the use of technological resources and of course also to keep in mind the amount of time that it takes for somebody to work with a specific uh, resource uh, or activity, yes, in order to make the learning experience uh, friendly, maybe not necessarily easy, but friendly and to a certain degree uh, challenging, which will be uh, beneficial at the end, okay? Havel? Yes, thank you, Fernando. Mm -hmm. um, I understand there are several questions. But I have some comments uh, uh, before we we leave today. Yes. Thank you, Fernando. So stay there. So before we go, I can I can say thank you. A uh, few comments. Remember that this has been a journey, right? This has been a journey uh, regarding uh, what we learned on Monday with Isaac, in which we talk about online assessment. And Isaac he gave us uh, a lot of apps, a lot of uh, websites to work not only on assessment but also to work on virtual classes uh, like google classes lms and etc um if you didn't see it you can check that webinar on our page on facebook sm mexico or university of data publishing or all the webinars are, are there you can have very very specific free tools uh, and websites that uh, isaac gave us 
And yesterday we talked about how to develop competencies because right now what we're facing is something new for us and and maybe we are not very skillful on on using technology so that's why Elsa Lapanco yesterday talked about how to uh, develop a new competence in these times regarding technology uh, we are going to repeat that that webinar because yesterday we had some audio problems but it, it is related but it's actual because we had to start thinking out of the box and today uh, we talk about how little by little we can start the transition on, on technology classes technological classes for example blended learning you incorporate uh, right now we're working more online, but uh, but eventually when we go back to normality and you incorporate uh, online features to do face to face traditional learning or teaching, eventually you are going to develop more a blended uh, class and th there are a lot of resources and you can research uh, pa papers, academic research regarding blended learning and how to incorporate it. And also Fernando talked about flip classroom, which is another way to uh, start being a technological teacher. If you uh, start sending previous information so the students can build learning before your class, you can um, start flipping your classroom and later on you can check or consolidate learning on the last stage. So this is also uh, a topic for another workshop. So probably we're going to have workshops about blended learning and flip classroom themselves because it's very deep and it's very, very interesting. How can we be more technological and we, when we go back to our face to face classes, we can continue working with technology a little bit more. And tomorrow that this is the key. This is what I'm going to tomorrow. We're going to talk about how to plan an online class. So everything is related. I, Isaac presented some very interesting websites uh, and a way uh, to assess our students on an online format. And then we develop competencies in order to be more technological. And today, Fernando shared with us some ways for uh, pillars or uh, strategies in order to be more technological cost tomorrow. We're going to talk about a specific activities uh, on an on online format, right? So tomorrow is very important. If you have been attending attending uh, all, all all the week of the four, the three last webinars. Tomorrow we're going to conclude with how to plan an online class. And there are several questions about how how to do it with teenagers, with children with kids, with adults. It is hard for the speaker to concentrate in every single level because we have only uh, an amount of time. We have about 90 minutes to develop the topic, but tomorrow we are going to provide general tips about how to plan an online classes with very specific tools and resources. And tomorrow the expert, which is Abraham Ruiz, he's, he's doing his master's in um, technology and education. So he's an expert on how to use free resources, specific websites and tools. So, so we're going to learn tomorrow. And tomorrow we're going to be at the same time that today is going to be a half past um, 12 Mexico time. Um, it's going to be the 90 minutes format. And we are going to have um, very, very interesting information. And one final comment we, before we say goodbye, Fernando and I, is to please complete the survey. The link is on the chat box. You can click on it. And um, it's very important to us your opinion. And also that's the way you can get your certificates. Uh, some of you were telling me that yesterday you had some problems doing it with Elsa de la Panco, so you can always do both. You can answer Elsa and Fernando's, so you can get both certificates. Um, and, and, and also we we know we will know your opinion about votes for uh, webinars or workshops. So one more time, we, we really appreciate your time. Uh, thank you, Fernando, for your uh, also your time and your knowledge. I don't thank know if you want to say something before we leave. 
No, well, I just want to say thank you, everybody, uh, for for participating, act, for actively participating, for sharing their comments, their their opinion about the topic. Um, remember, this is becoming. This is like the process we need to 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 follow in order to develop awareness about about um, uh, technology and education. There's it's a long way to go. It, maybe we will never reach the top. 100% uh, because technology changes every day, every single year. We have different options and our job is just to keep up with technology. Thank you, Fernando. And trust us, uh, we listen. Actually, there are several comments to have this chat and other talks in Spanish. So the team, uh, we are working on how to um, translate and also adapt some webinars into in a Spanish format so we can get to more teachers through these times. So one more time, we really, really appreciate you being here and please stay tuned for tomorrow. At the same time, a very interesting topic, which is planning online classes. Uh, please uh, have a nice afternoon or evening. Please be safe and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you and bye-bye. Thank you everybody, bye.